I want to believe that all of us would like to see today being better than yesterday and tomorrow being better than today. And that is just a simple way of defining progress in our lives. I like what Tony Robbins says when he defines success. It's all about the progress that you make in life. And I subscribe to that definition. But unfortunately, most of us are our own enemies to the progress that we should achieve in our lives. Without wasting any time, let's get into it. The first one is not working on yourself. Friends, we all go through experiences, bad and good, and experiences that hurt us, experiences that makes us question who we are at the end of the day. Things happen, we experience death, we experience grief, we experience divorce. There are many things that are happening in life. But at the end of the day, for you to be a better person and move on with your life, you have to work on yourself. But unfortunately, if you don't work on yourself, that is one best way in which you are going to stand in front of your progress. You've got to do the inner job, unfortunately. You've got to do the inner job. And doing the inner job has got to be done by you. It's something that you cannot outsource. You can only outsource it if you need the help of a therapist, depending on what your challenges are. But at the end of the day, even the therapist, the coach, the counselor is not going to do the job for you. They are going to give you tools and resources for you to be able to move forward. It takes you as a person to work on yourself, to deal with your hurts, to deal with your fears, to deal with your doubts, to deal with your envy, to deal with jealousy, because those are the things that are going to hold you back. And they are going to suppress all the talents and the strengths that you have if you don't work on them, because they are going to overshadow everything that is great within you that you should be doing so that you can be able to move your life forward. So work on yourself so that you can become that radiant beam of light that you were born to be, so that you can be hope to other people. If you cannot, if you are not working on yourself, you cannot be all those good things that you can become to yourself, but also to other people. The second point that is the enemy of progress is being dictated by your desires. Most of us, we know the concept of needs, we know the concept of wants, and we always are taught that the needs are some things that you cannot live with. But the ones we can probably leave aside and then over time we can budget our time, our energy, our money to be able to meet those demands. But also we've got desires. And this is something that is paining you now. Something that is driven by greed that says you have to do me now. And when I look at just the subject of the brain, in simpler terms, you've got the lower brain and then the higher brain. And the lower brain says, you have to do me now. You need to satisfy me now. And that happens with things like giving of shopping. You want to shop now because you want to sort certain things within your emotions. You need to satisfy this edge within you. You, you, you succumb to impulses. It could be buying, as I said, shopping. It could be uh, succumbing to things like substance abuse because you want things to happen now. It could be the need for money. You want it now. Everything that you do is dominated by greed. If you allow yourself for desires to dictate for you, you are not going to go anywhere. We can include sexual desires as well. You need it to happen and it must happen now. And unfortunately, sometimes with the desires, we want more of this desire, of the same thing. But at the end of the day, more does not close this big hole that we want to fill with. You need to step back and ask yourself, should I really be succumbing to these desires? What are they serving? What is it 
that I'm trying to solve over and over by doing one and the same thing over and over? Why am I not getting to that point of satisfaction? Because you start to realize that the answer does not lie, lie with more of the same thing. The only thing is that you allow yourself to succumb to your desires. And when you do that, you are constantly reversing the gains that you should be achieving in your life. Be careful of these desires and the demands that are making on you. Because if you do not arrest those desires then you, they are going to arrest you and control your life constantly and forever. And that is one big enemy of progress. Let's look at the third point, which is holding on to stuff. And here I'm talking about physical stuff. I've got two people that are close to me and they've got one thing in common. They hold on to physical stuff. The other one likes to hold on to cars and beautiful clothes. Uh, that do not even fit him and the other one likes to hold on to furniture and the th the common thing about them is that they found themselves at a dire financial point where selling this stuff could have given them some financial breather and i'm not saying by any stretch of imagination that selling those stuff could have solved their financial problems what i'm saying is that they should because they are not using all of this stuff. As far as I know, based on my discussion with them, there is no sentimental value to hold into this stuff. Then the question is, why are you holding this, these things? And the common thing is that all these things that they are holding on to are not with them. They are with other people, meaning that they cause destruction and inconvenience to other people. Little do people realize that physical clutter creates mental and emotional clutter and by releasing yourself from this physical clutter you open up your mind to more mental openness more awareness and you start to think much better there is a deep connection there and if they were to do that they would were going to be able to realize that they can be able to make progress because all these things that they have around them still gives them hope because they look towards the, the, the past of what had made them successful. And they are now only holding to this uh, thing that defines them from their past. But they, little do they realize that looking back to their past holds their current situation and also stands between the now and the future. So holding on to stuff is something that can be an enemy of progress because you need to move on in life. And I'm not saying you just do a drive through as if you're going through a food outlet. No, you work on yourself, as I said, in the first bullet so that you can let go of these things. If, if, like I said earlier, I didn't see anything of sentimental value. If this thing had something of sentimental value to you, but now it does not serve the purpose, you need to work on it so that you can let it go and focus on other things. Let the old go so that the next can come. But the next cannot come whilst the old is still there. That is how people hold themselves backwards and how that's how they become in their own enemies to their own progress let's look at point number four that is listening to people who are not qualified to provide you advice and i'm saying this with due respect the we we, we sometimes listen to people who are eloquent who have not walked the journey and we give them everything of us so that they can direct us to something. When you read the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, the, 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 I, I forgot the name now, but he talks about how can you need financial advice from a bricklayer. And this is not to undermine the bricklayer, but what he was saying in the book is that how can you give, you get advice for somebody who's not working on something and you expect them to be great in that particular field. And that's what we do with our lives. Let me tell you a story. It happened with one of my friends a couple of years back. And um, he listened to something or had a conversation going. And the conversation was that in future, people will not need houses. Why do we buy our houses? Because our kids are not even going to stay with us. I said, probably sell 
your house and uh, have fled there with some uh, and maybe that that can give you money firstly these people this person did not have a house not because he was following that advice because his financial situation was dire and a couple of months down the line he now changed the tune because he wanted to buy a house because he needs a roof for him and uh, his daughter if i had listened to that advice where could i have been I could have sold my house. We could have been in the same position because some people are envious of where you are. So they want you to be in the same position and walk the same journey of wanting. And I said, I'm not going to listen to this advice because it does not make sense. And unfortunately, most of us, we listen to people who, do not, who are not qualified in certain areas and we want to make life-changing decisions based on what these people have said. Some people just want to learn secondhand. They don't go into uh, journals. They don't to go into articles. They don't go into documentaries to learn about something. But because Botaki is a bit eloquent and they, they say something, they take it as a gospel truth and they want to implement that in their lives. No. I'm saying don't listen to uh, unqualified advisors because you might face some of the gains that you should be making in your life. That is one of the enemies of progress, to listen to people that are not qualified to give you the advice. Let's look at the fifth and the last one. It's all about normalizing failure. I know most people that I have spoken to, especially in our South African townships, it might be that they are despondent, I understand. But I also get people who have made it so clear that they do not want to succeed. What do I mean by that? When you give them the opportunity, they will tell you a thousand reasons why something will not work. They will tell you how somebody has failed, but they have never tried it themselves. And as a result, they will tell you that, no man, you can go next door. I'm not going to try it because they have normalized failure in their lives. Failure has become part of who they are and they are happy to stay in that situation. And the more you normalize failure, it's, it's a given. You are going to stay in the same situation. So not normalize failure because once you start normalizing failure, it is you standing in front of your own progress. You becoming your own enemy. Yes, failure is part of life, but failure that you don't learn from is the one that is going to help you go deeper and deeper into the sinkhole. You've got to stand up and learn from this failure so that you can become a better person. But if you normalize failure, if you sleep with failure, if you make it comfortable for you that failure is part of your life and there's nothing that you can do about it, then you're not going to progress in life. That is why it's important that you do not normalize failure. Yes, there might be people in your family that might have not moved on to change the family situation. But probably you are that person who is capable of changing the circumstances in your own family. But you cannot do it from the point of normalizing failure. So if you normalize failure, you're just adding on the list of things that are enemies towards your own progress. Number six, meaningless relationships. You have relationships that we engage in and you find that these relationships are taking us nowhere. There are relationships you get into, you find that the conversations are not building you. There are relationships where you find that your energy is zapped. You are not growing in those types of relationships. They can be sexual escapades you know, where you engage in meaningless relationships only for sexual pleasure. But there's nothing meaningful that comes out of it. It could be friends who are not willing to grow themselves and you are the only one willing to grow. You do not belong into that cycle because constantly they are going to zap your energy and you are not going to grow. There are relationships where nothing of value is being discussed, but it's all about people, people, what this person has done, what this other person has done. Those types of relationships are not going to help you grow. You can probably look at your own surroundings and find out those types of relationships where you know that there is no growth but only regression all the time. Thank you for taking this time to listen to me and I hope if this video and the content that I've shared resonates with you, please subscribe so that you can help us grow. 
and also share with others so that we can share this knowledge. This is a small cake, but we are going to create small pieces of this cake and share so that all of us can get benefit out of it. Before I go, let me just recap these six factors. Not working on yourself, being dictated by desires, holding on to things. Number four, listening to unqualified advisors. Number five, normalizing failure. Number six, meaningless relationships. Until we meet in the next video, please make sure that you work on the six factors. You can take one or two and become better in it and then you can jump to other stuff. Rome was not built in one day. Until the next video, you are loved.